When you get only a couple days from the start of the regular season, is it is it nerves? Is it excitement? Are you just like, finally? W what is going through your mind at this moment and the players' yeah, minds? I think, I think a little bit of everything. You know, opening day is just unique. Uh, you, you, know, you prepare all. These guys are preparing all offseason. I, you know, I remember being a player and just the excitement of opening day. Um, just everything that comes with it. Um, it's a kind of a, a weird day. Weird things happen that day. But I think we're just ready to get out and play. Um, you know, I, I, I'm excited about what happened in camp, but I do know it was it was spring training. Like, you know, none of that mattered as far as the win loss column, and that's what we obviously set out this year to do is to win. So, um, you know, it's a long season. It's 162 this year, which is you know, I'm grateful for because I wasn't sure that was going to happen. Um, but now we're we're ready to go, and uh, you know, opening days around the corner, and our guys are ready. Woody, my pitcher's question is. With the limited amount of spring training, and I know guys train somewhat year round, and and guys come in, their arms are in better shape now than back when we played going into spring training. How much is it going to be your job and your staff's job to make sure that there's, um, I don't know, I don't want to say lack of injuries. You, you might not be able to totally control that, but that you're watching your pitcher's arms because you weren't able to maybe do exactly how a spring training would go. Yeah, that's a tough one. It's a, it's, a, it's a little bit unknown, and um, you know, normally they would have another couple weeks of games where you know they don't matter. Uh, so the stress level on the arm, on the body, on the mind is like you know it's obviously limited in, in a spring training setting. Guys are trying to make teams, and I get it. There's stress there. It's a little different when you get into the season. Um, everything ticks up. You know, the excitement and you know things start mattering. It goes on the back of the baseball card. So uh, those last couple weeks that we will not have for these guys are actually going to be in season now. So that concerns me a little bit. It concerns all of us. Uh, I think we got to be really, really mindful of that and, and just kind of watch them and make sure they get their, their rest. And, you know, the 28-man roster helps. So adding the extra pitchers will help um, relieve a little bit of that. Uh, but there's nothing like pitching in the regular season. So I think it, you know, across the league, it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it plays out. But for us, you know, with, with, with our organization, you know, we're going to be really, really careful with, with guys. Uh, especially the starters, not letting them go too far. Um, relievers not really trying to pitch them back to back and, and putting too much uh, stress load on them. Rangers manager Chris Woodward joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. And uh, I, we we were kind of surprised when we saw Brad Miller out in la left field the other day, Woody. And I'm kind of, is that the plan for him this year? And when when did that become part of the, yeah, we can put him out in left field and that's where we're going to keep his bat. Yeah, the good thing is, is like there's it's a, it's a functional working team um, with the roster that we have, and you know he'll definitely get you know he'll probably honestly in the beginning get most of his reps in left field, along with uh, with Nick Solak, kind of in a platoon situation. He can play third base. I actually coached him as a shortstop, um, so he has a lot of versatility. He can play first base. I think he played right field quite a bit when uh, you know with the Phillies last year. So um, he's got a lot of versatility. But I think as of right now. Um, depending on how Andy, you know, gets off to his start and uh, how the, the team kind of functions together, I think that would probably be primarily. Um, but the fact that he can play third base, um, tough right-handed matchup for Andy, you know, could put him out in left or, or put him at, at third and then, uh, you know, be able to move people around a little bit, even put Cole Calhoun in left field if we needed to. So uh, we have a lot of options. Like I said, the versatility helps. Obviously, on paper and with the money spent and with the transactions made, Simeon, Seeger, Garver, I know there are more that you were just talking about. How realistically, how much better do you think this offense can be this season? Oh, my gosh. It's a, a ton better, clearly with the, with the upgrades and, and the personnel. Um, when, you, when you bring in two guys like Simeon, Seeger, uh, the importance of them being in the lineup is that they represent exactly what we want from an offensive standpoint. Um, their profiles, the way they conduct their bats, the way they prepare, um, and then obviously with the with the new hitting guys, um, you know their their philosophies and, and the way they game plan and the way they you know make our players better. They've already made a, a huge improvement in that in that regard, uh, and everybody's bought in. Everybody's all in. In a short amount of time, that was probably the most difficult thing for Donnie and, and Tim to do was to to gain trust and, and Seth as well to gain trust with our players in that process. Um, but everybody, you know poured in and it's a unique group of guys that uh, that want to win and they want to they want to do it together and our biggest thing is it's a nine on one approach like we got to have all nine guys buying in whoever's starting that day and then be able to at times you know like I said with the, the flexibility on the roster you know with the platoons um, maybe in both even right and left field 
we have a unique opportunity to kind of match up whenever we want. Um, and everybody's on board with that. There's no, uh, there's no, everybody wants to play every day, but at the same time, everybody knows they have a, a role on this team and, uh, it's pretty special. You've had, uh, the unique experience of handing the ball to multiple different, uh, pitchers for opening day here in Arlington. And, you know, Taylor Hearn, we all love Taylor Hearn here on the show. Can you like explain or describe what, what his face looked like when you told him he was going to be the opening day starter here? Um, yeah, no, that's amazing. Uh, it, it was a unique opportunity for us. Obviously, John Gray, you know, getting the the opening day not in a couple of days, but like the home opener is a big deal, mm-hmm. especially this year. We got a lot uh, a lot of anticipation and excitement for this year uh, with our roster and where we're at and our expectation to win. And uh, Taylor was, you know, we looked at it and part of it was strategic, but I'd say most of it came down to you know what he's done and and how he kind of progressed and grew and and developed in the last year and a half and. Um, he's in a really good spot right now, and he's a hometown kid. The things that he's done, you know, for this community, I, I think it's a it's a really special moment for him and his family. And I think for the for honestly the area um, to have a kid like him who represents the the, the the area so well, and he does so many things in the community to help people and impact the the community around him. Um, it's a it's a really really special moment. So when it comes to your guys pitching, the Major League Baseball passed the rule that you can use the catcher computer system and the kind of uh, headphone there uh, into the hat. Is that going to be what the Texas Rangers use this year? Yes, we will actually, it's, it, as long as it, uh, MLB approved it. And so we're, we've been rolling it out uh, <clears throat> pretty much all camp since we got it. And you know it, it, it's actually really good. and it, A lot of our guys like it. Our pitchers like it, uh, the infielders, the guys who have it in their hat. It's really easy. Um, you can turn down the volume. You can turn it up. Uh, you know, obviously, it's going to be loud in Toronto. You may have to turn it up at times, but, uh, you know, the, the opposing team can't hear you. The catcher has a little tube that, you know, doesn't allow it to the, the, the noise to kind of be able to have the hitter hear it. So it's, it's a unique thing, and it eliminates any kind of, you know, sign stealing or, you know, that's obviously an issue at second base. And, you know, the good teams, the teams that are really good at it, they can pick and they can pick their signs apart really hard nowadays to do that. But at the same time, like it just eliminates that. It speeds the game up. The pitcher gets his sign before you don't have to put fingers down. You don't have to worry about getting crossed up or anything like that. So they just hear fastball in. Okay, here we go. Um, We've actually liked it. The pitchers like the tempo that it creates. The players behind them like it. So we're going to roll it out as long as we can. Were you good at picking signs when you were at second base since you somewhat played some middle infield? Usually catchers and middle infielders are good because they kind of know all the keys, indicators, and so they can go through it. Usually, you know, outfielders aren't the best at picking signs. How were you at, or did you even try to relay signs to the hitter? Yeah, always. I mean, I think I got brought up, uh, you know, my first big league team, you know, we were really good at it in Toronto when I when I got called up. Carlos Delgado and those guys were, were elite at it. Um, and back then it was a little simpler. It was like second shake first, uh, you know, last sign, you know, maybe, you know, outs plus one or something simple like that. But nowadays, you know, what we had in L.A., we were really good at it as a, when I was coaching there. And, you know, it, we forced teams to have to get, make these, like, really sophisticated sign sequences. Um, and even then we were still able to sometimes get them. Um, but the panic that ensues when a team thinks you have their signs and you know as a pitcher, oh, yeah, I must have tipped that worst. pitch because they knew it was coming. Um, it creates a little bit of hysteria and, um, you know, the opposing manager and bench and they, they freak out a little bit. So we want to make sure we're obviously doing everything we can without crossing any lines um, <laughs> that uh, that were crossed, obviously, most recently. Um, but uh, at the same time, it's, it's an advantage if you can uh, if you can figure those things out. 